I've made a couple of videos now covering the benefits of both L-arginine and L-citrulline as a potential solution for erectile dysfunction. And one of the most common questions I'm asked is, which one works best? So in order to answer this, we first need to look at what they both do and what the ultimate outcome is when you supplement with either of these substances. Both L-arginine and L-citrulline ultimately lead to increased production of nitric oxide in the order of L-citrulline, which then converts to L-arginine, which then is a direct precursor to nitric oxide. So before I move quickly on to what nitric oxide actually does, with this logic and sequence of production, two reasonable questions arise. One is, why would you bother taking L-citrulline for it to be simply converted to L-arginine? Can't you just skip this step and jump straight to L-arginine supplementation? Wouldn't this make L-arginine more effective? And the second question would be, why can't we skip both precursors to nitric oxide and jump straight to supplementing with nitric oxide itself? Both reasonable questions. So let's start by answering the question about whether you can just simply skip to supplementing with nitric oxide itself. Nitric oxide is actually a gas which in itself makes it rather difficult to deliver in the form of a supplement. And to add to this, it's highly reactive with a lifetime of just a few seconds, rendering the act of capturing the substance and delivering it in a bioavailable manner in the form of a supplement impossible. So the only option when it comes to increasing nitric oxide in our bodies is to provide our body with nitric oxide precursors. So we simply give our body the tools that it needs to produce more nitric oxide on demand. This forces us to then move back up the production chain to the two most well-known precursors to nitric oxide, which are L-arginine and L-citrulline. A fun fact before we move on to the comparison between these two, nasal breathing actually contributes to the production of nitric oxide in the body, whilst mouth breathing does not. This was discovered in a 1997 Japanese study titled The Comparison of Exhaled Nitric Oxide in Cardiorespiratory Indices Between Nasal and Oral Breathing During Submaximal Exercise in Humans. I've linked to this in the description of the video below. And it's actually due to the fact that nitric oxide is created in the sinuses and is able to enter your body when you breathe in through your nose. So aside from being a pretty disgusting habit that reminds me of the Hey Arnold character that used to lurk over Helga's shoulder, mouth breathing isn't good for nitric, nitric oxide production and therefore achieving vasodilation. So anyone suffering with erectile dysfunction may benefit from actively focusing on nasal breathing. So anyway, back to L-arginine and L-citrulline, which one is most effective for maximum nitric oxide production? Well, in short, data from studies show that L-citrulline is around 1.6 times more effective than L-arginine at increasing nitric oxide production. And the reason for this is largely that L-arginine suffers from a high level of first-pass metabolism via the gastrointestinal tract and liver which basically means the level of arginine that's then received in blood plasma is depleted by the time that it gets there. Determinations of the level of this depletion vary from 38% in humans to 75% in mice, which is important to note since many studies on arginine are based on mice. So the impact of first pass metabolism may be exaggerated in these studies. But nonetheless, the 38% first pass metabolism shown in humans is in comparison to the 0% first pass metabolism that L-citrulline experiences. So in other words, 100% of L-citrulline supplements achieve systemic circulation, whereas potentially only 62% of L-arginine makes it there. So supplementing with L-citrulline rather than L-arginine basically protects the supplementation from depletion, allowing conversion to L-arginine to take place beyond first pass metabolism and then subsequent conversion of L-arginine to nitric oxide. A 2017 study titled Supplemental Citrulline is More Efficient Than Arginine in Increasing Systemic Arginine Availability in Mice confirmed this, as the title would suggest, and concluded that only 30% of the supplemental arginine entered the peripheral circulation of mice versus 100% of supplemental citrulline entering the peripheral circulation of mice. Again, important to note here the difference between first pass metabolism in mice and humans, suggesting that the difference in absorption levels between arginine and citrulline may be less exaggerated than this in human application, but still apparent nonetheless. 
Another potential benefit of L-citrulline versus L-arginine is that arginine has been known to cause gastrointestinal distress and diarrhea, whereas citrulline is less known for having this effect. So there you have it, L-citrulline does appear to be more effective at producing a greater level of nitric oxide, which ultimately creates the vasodilation effect that allows for greater blood flow and stronger erections. I hope you found this video helpful and it helps to clear up this common question of which supplement is best for treating erectile dysfunction. If you enjoyed the content, please go ahead and subscribe by hitting the button below this video and don't forget to also hit the bell symbol so you can be notified of any new health and wellness videos that we post. Thanks for watching.